Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today we're going to be talking about learning React. I have the pleasure of being joined by Kyle Cook. Hi Kyle, how's it going? Have you had a good week so far? Oh yeah, I mean it's been great. It's only Tuesday, but it's it is been only going well so far. It's only Tuesday, but this show goes out on a Friday, so <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody else is luckier than me then. Yeah, right, right. Because you'll be hearing this now and it'll be closer to the weekend. <laughs> so how's, uh, how's things going? You've got the, uh, the YouTube channel Web Dev Simplified. How's things going with that? It's going really great. Yeah. yeah. Since you had me on last time, the channel has grown a lot. I've gotten a lot of good feedback, been able to make more and more videos quicker, which has just been amazing. So it's really well. Yeah. You're doing really well on that channel. It's, it's got a, a lot of uh, a big audience. It's, uh, it's growing really, really well. I'm so pleased for you. Um, and we, we mentioned before the, the, the interview here that uh, it was February that we last spoke. So it's in a short piece of time that it's, uh, it's grown uh, really well. You've recently done a course as well called um, uh, Learn React Today. Is that is that right? Yep, correct. Yeah, I decided to take my approach of simplifying concepts and apply it to <laughs> React because I, I love React and use it all the time. So I figured, why not take that simplified approach and try to teach React to people in a short time frame as opposed to a long time frame? Yeah, that sounds super, super cool. Um, I've got links in the show notes below of this course as well, if anybody's interested. Um, but before we talk about the course, let's first talk about React. So in your opinion, what is React? What does that, what is React? What is the, the whole point of React? So kind of the idea of React is it is uh, technically it's a library, but you can mm. call it a framework. It really doesn't matter. But the idea of React is to make building front end UIs and especially user experiences much easier because you have the idea of components and in React, instead of like in traditional JavaScript and jQuery, if you want to create interaction, you have to kind of react to events and then you update everything manually. And then you have to make sure you don't forget to update everything. But with mm -hmm. React, you have components, which kind of just take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And each component is an individual part of your website. So that's kind of where React differs from normal JavaScript is it's about building components mm -hmm. and you define what the component looks like. And then it'll just update itself when things change instead of you manually updating it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've played a bit with React and it's the components. The components are the thing. It's the key, isn't it? It's, it's uh, so flexible. Uh, you can create your own components. You can def define what they are and the, how they behave. Um, so, okay, what else can you do with React? We've, we've just mentioned components. Is there anything else that you can do? So React can kind of, I mean, you can really do anything that you can do with vanilla JavaScript right. with React. Right. It's just that you don't really want to do everything in React because React is more specific to building things out that are more complex on the front end. Mm -hmm. Like if you have an application that's just a bare bones front end and it's mostly just forms submitting to a back end, yeah. then React doesn't really make sense. But when you have that more complex interaction, having the ability to break things into components is really useful. And that's kind of how all of the popular front end frameworks work mm. is they're all component based. They just mm. have their own approaches as to how you build your code and react is more JavaScript focused. So it's more about building JavaScript while the other ones are more about setting up a framework for you that does a lot of the work behind the scenes. Mm. So do you, are you saying that react is a bit more modular compared to other frameworks? Um, it depends. I think with react, there's not really a like set way to structure your code. Like you have components and React tells you how to make components and how components should talk to each other. Mm -hmm. But how you actually set up your folders and how you manage your CSS, that's all kind of up to you. Mm -hmm. While in most other frameworks, they have a very set way of this is where your CSS goes, this is where your components go. So React kind of gives you more freedom. Mm -hmm. But with that freedom, you also have to, you know, with responsibility, you know, mm -hmm. you need to make sure you take care of all that extra power that you have with extra responsibility. Right. So you're not you're not essentially being bound into some sort of thing that you have to conform to. You can take the component in any kind of direction you want. Uh, yeah, I dig that. Does it have any, does it follow any kind of sort of um, standards or conventions or anything? Uh, like what kind of standards are you talking about? Do you well, mean like specific React ones or like something outside of React? Yeah. Does it have any, does it have any standards itself? So the most part, React tries to stay away from making any hard and fast standards. Mm -hmm. Kind of the main thing, there's certain like patterns mm -hmm. that have emerged from React. Okay. And a lot of times the really popular patterns will get rolled up into the language itself. Sure. So they try to take really popular patterns and make them easier. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of more like a design pattern 
idea is what React is built on, as opposed to like, here is how you do things. Right. Yeah. Okay. I get that. So, okay. What, what kind of, what kind of applications do you, would you typically create a, a use React with? So like I talked about earlier, heavy user interaction applications mm-hmm. are like the prime example for React, but also any single page application you make, building it with React is going to make it so much easier because that's really difficult to do with vanilla JavaScript. Mm-hmm. But if you use React, it kind of is made for single page applications, especially when you start adding in React Router, which allows you to do all mm-hmm. of your routing really mm-hmm. easily. So it kind of just takes care of the single pageness for you. Mm-hmm. And all you have to do is handle how everything looks. But you can even use React for things beyond just those specific use cases because they have a thing called React Native, which allows you to build mobile apps with React. You can also use Electron with React so you can make desktop applications. Nice. There's even a person that made a Steam game using <laughs> React, which is just blows my mind. So wow. you can use it for a lot of things. Okay. Yeah, I, I dig the single page application. I've played about I played around with Gatsby. Um and uh, that changed my way of thinking about creating a, a web page because I could create a web application without within a single page, if that kind of makes sense. You know, you're pulling in things from GraphQL, left, right, and center, um, mm-hmm. which, uh, and then using the, the router, the, the React router was, was uh, very nice and easy to, to play with. I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was nice to, uh, nice to use it was adaptable as well. So you, mm-hmm. you didn't feel like you were forced into this is the way it needs to happen. It was very flexible. So, I mean, how, what is it like being a React developer? I mean, what's the, React is kind of seen as this trendy kid, right? Is is that how it feels when you're writing React? I don't really think so. I think <laughs> React is at the point where it's really quite stable. It's been around for long enough and there's Mm. a really huge base around React. So many people use it that there's so many standards and like best practices that people use. I think it has a very stable feeling to it as opposed to maybe if you like did something in Svelte, which is a newer framework that has much more of that wild west kind of, you just don't know exactly what's the best way to do things. Right. And I think the other thing about building React apps, which is why I enjoy it so much is it's a lot more like starting a new app all the time because the best part about programming is when you start something fresh everybody Mm. like nobody wants to work on that 10 year old app Mm -hmm. you want to start something cool and new and fresh give it your own ideas Mm. and with components it's really easy because each component is almost like starting your own little mini application because you just that new component is fresh it's not tied to anything else and you can kind of start from scratch almost every time which makes it a lot of fun sure sure is there is there any pain points of using React? Um, is there any kind of areas that people find m- most difficult doing? Yeah, I think the biggest one of the biggest advantages is also one of the biggest pain points is that there is no set framework of how you structure everything. Mm. So you kind of need to find out for you what works best, as well as kind of some best practices. I see. So it takes a little bit more research and practice and just experimenting to figure out how the best way to do things is because you could do it a hundred different ways, Mm. but probably 10 of those are better than the other 90. So (laughs) finding those 10 is, I think, one of the hardest things about React. So it's a bit of trial and error. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 Yeah, Like when I first started with React, I was very like, I, we knew how to do things with React, but I really wasn't sure like the best practices of how to do things. Mm -hmm. And as I just started developing more and reading more and watching videos, I was like, okay, this is why I need to do it this way. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember when I was playing with uh, with with React, and it was like, um, you know, you, you can't you come from a world where you this is how it should be done, right? And and you expect that to be the case, and then you're you're given this open book of possibilities, um, and you feel like you know you're doing things a bit naughty by not following any kind of sort of structured convention. Um, obviously, you have the framework to to work within, but it felt a little bit dirty doing a couple of React things, um, but they actually, it paid off in the end and it made things a lot easier to work with. Um, and uh, it, it ended up becoming quite snappy and efficient, actually, which I really, really enjoyed uh, playing with. Um, is there is there any skills though that are required to learn react is there anything that any you know that uh, say for example if you were a, f- a fresh out of boot camp or or what have you is there anything that you would advise people to to learn before touching react 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, you have the basics where you need to know the basics of HTML and the basics mm. of CSS, just cool. because you're going to be using HTML and CSS. Uh -huh. And then when it comes to JavaScript is where you have a little bit more specifics on what you need to know. Yeah. I think having at least intermediate skills in JavaScript is important. Like you've built, maybe you've built some applications on your own. So you kind of know the pain points mm. of building user interaction in vanilla JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Because if you just jump right into React without building a bunch of projects in normal JavaScript, you kind of lose out on why React is so important and how it solves so many problems for you. Yeah. And also React uses a lot of, like a lot of the best practices in React use ES6 or beyond features mm -hmm. in them. So like the REST operator, the spread operator, you have mm -hmm. object destructuring and all of that kind of stuff, which is really something that you may not know jumping into React. So I really highly advise people learn the basics of ES6, like promises, you need to know classes and that kind of stuff, just the basics of ES6. Yeah, I guess if someone didn't know HTML, JavaScript and CSS and went straight to React, it would be, they would have that sort of weird idea that everything is like this. And then if they went to something else, it would be a little bit weird, a little bit strange. Um, because I guess, I guess, I mean, am I right in saying that React is itself its own ecosystem in the sense that it it conforms to these components and you can split components out into little sort of subcomponents and stuff? It it is very React esque. Is that would do you concur yeah. with that? Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of the frameworks kind of share a similar ecosystem of where they're component based. Like if you learn React, I think it's an easy jump to go to Vue or Angular or one of the other frameworks because. Sure. The component mindset is also one of the hardest things to learn is like how to think in components, yeah. because when you're building normal applications, you're like, OK, here's all my HTML mm -hmm. and now here's all my CSS and now all my JavaScript. And in React, it's like, here's my HTML, JavaScript and CSS for my button. And now here's my sure. HTML, CSS, JavaScript for something else. So it's very kind of a different mindset. Yeah, definitely. It totally takes you out of that sort of like all my CSS is in one file and all my JavaScript is in another file and all my HTML pulls in those two things. It mm -hmm. is itself in, in itself and it gets a little bit uh, crazy when you start having components and components and components and it's, it kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know the, the first few React applications I made, like my components were just big components. They were like one page was one component and I had to slowly be like, okay, this is not how React no. works. Like I, was, <laughs> I had my old mindset and I was trying to apply it to React and you really need to warp your mindset to the new component mindset. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, I mean, how long have you been doing React for? I've been doing React for about a year and a half now, yeah. I want to say. Yeah. I started, yeah, about a year to a year and a half ago. I really just jumped into it at work. One day, my boss looked at my code and was like, uh, why are you making your own framework? Like, why don't you use React? And I was like, what's React? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I learned React and I was like, oh my gosh, why have I been doing this manually the whole time? Because I was literally building like my own framework and... So it that, has been great since then. You know, that's a good way to go because when you start learning your own, when you start writing your own framework, you, you start to um, experience the pain points that uh, lots of people who've done the same thing uh, get. And you have more of an appreciation as to how these frameworks are actually put together because all, a lot of the questions have been solved because a lot of the questions have been asked already. Um, yeah, you don't just kind of like expect it to work. So yeah, uh, I, I'm totally digging the, the creating of a framework. I created my own framework for PHP once. Um, and, uh, I, I was very stubborn. I was like, no, I'm going to use this. This is what I'm going to use it for <laughs> <laughs> to life discovered things like symphony and cake PHP. And then it was like, right, that's going straight in the bin. I'm going <laughs> to, <laughs> yep. That's exactly how my code was, but you got a understanding for things like sessions and, and, uh, you know, cookie management and all of that stuff, you know, you got an appreciation for how data hangs together and, um, designing and architecting a system. So. So yeah, um, is that something that you would recommend people do? Um, uh, no, I, I no. <laughs> don't think so. I think like it was a lot of work and while it does really give you like the appreciation you get for a framework like React is multiplied if you build your own like mm. from scratch. Oh yeah, thing, yeah. I don't think it's really worth it unless you really want to learn the inner workings of a framework because mm. building your own will give you that idea. But I think if you just want to be a React developer, going the route of making your own framework, it takes a long time and it's not really skills that will apply super well to React. It'll just make you really appreciate it when you start yeah, working with it. That's super true. That's super true. I mean, why make more work for yourself, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, let's um, let, let's move now into into the course. Um, so I mentioned the course before, but first of all, what is the course called? Let's let's start with that. Yeah, so the course is called Learn React Today, and kind of the idea of the name is that the course is small enough that you can consume the entire course in one day if you were really adamant and just went through it hard, which is kind of my idea. I want to make it short as possible so that okay. you can learn React and just start using it because the way you learn things is by implementing them yeah. instead of watching videos. And the videos are really there to get you to the point where you can start working on it yourself. Sure. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I mean, the, uh, the whole JavaScript thing, well, anything really in terms of code, you have to do it. You can't just listen to someone. You'll, you'll obviously absorb information and knowledge and stuff and you'll hear keywords, but you have to just smash that keyboard and type those keys and, and, uh, and actually break and make things. Um, so yeah, learning in that's in today. That's, that's cool. Um, that's very clever, clever title. So Thanks. Uh, how, how, how long is the course then? So right now the course is between about four and five hours. It's maybe like four hours, 20 minutes, four hours, 30 minutes. I have a few extra videos I'm planning to add in the coming Ooh, weeks and months, but okay. that'll probably push it closer to the five to five hours, 15 minute mark. That's very comfortable for a day. Nice. Yeah, 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 definitely. I wanted to make it short enough that you could digest it, code it yourself, and mm -hmm. then, you know, move on to the next video without having to rush through everything. What kind of what kind of things do you cover in the course? So I cover everything in Modern React. The course is very recent, just came out, you know, like two weeks ago or so. Sure. So I cover uh, everything to do with React itself. So JSX, class components, function components, and hooks, mm -hmm. which are really the big things with React. Also cover context as well, which is really important. But mm. the idea of the course is not necessarily just to like brain dump on you the documentation of React, mm. but to try to teach you the React mindset, that component mindset. Because for me, when I was learning, like the React documentation is pretty good. Mm -hmm. It can teach me a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the component mindset was really hard for me to figure out. So that's what I try to focus on in the course. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. It's it's like um, trying to trying to understand an abstract concept just by reading about it. It's like, mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, well, that doesn't make any sense. You have to try yeah. it out and break it. <laughs> yeah. And the hard part is even when you start trying it out, it's so different than what you're used to. It's like almost pains you to write it that way at first until you really get it figured out. Yeah. Th uh, yeah. That, that's, the, that's, a, that's a good point. I mean, it's, it's, that's what I found when I was playing with Gatsby. It's like you, you, you are in this zone of this is how it should be. And then you end up writing code in the Gatsby way. And it's like, you, you almost feel like you shouldn't be doing it because it feel because it looks wrong to begin with and then mm -hmm. it makes sense and it's like oh yeah like it, yeah it's magical it's once it clicks magical. You're like oh wow this is way better than what i was doing before when the penny drops it's like yeah that does make sense <laughs> yep uh okay so i mean you said that there's more um more modules is it do you term them as modules or videos so the course is broken down into right now currently it's two projects there's okay. one project, which is about an hour, and that is like the, the documentation brain dump project where mm. I like teach you everything, the nitty gritty of all the different parts of React that you need to know. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. second project, which is the rest of the course, you know, three and a half hours or so, mm. that is going to be all of the mindset teaching. So it's like, here's how you use everything I just taught you in the first project, and we're going to implement it in a way it's component based and try to get you thinking in that component mindset as you implement all these new features. So it's both theoretical and practical. That's really cool. Yeah. 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 Actually, I have a video at the very end of the course, which is like a review of the previous code that we've written. It's my favorite video because it's like a code review of the code. So it's a really great way for me to say, okay, this is why we chose this pattern. You know, like here's why it's good. Here's why it's bad. Like here's what you could do. Here's what mm. you should have done. Like that kind of stuff. I really like. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, uh, I I really like that pr approach. It's sort of like because because often these courses are like, yep, you're done. You know, mm -hmm. there's your certificate. Pat yourself on the back. But having a having the approach of this is what we've created. Now let's review it. That is enforcing. You're reinforcing the learner's understanding of the course. It's like reading your own writing again. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really really good. And. Uh, uh, Forgive me for asking, but do you do you have any kind of um, do you do you talk about where it could could go from there? You know, in terms of like upgrades or changes in the future. Yeah, actually, the very last video of my course, as it is right now, is a video that says, "Here's what we've built so far," and it's like I've taught you everything you need to know. Now you need to just start implementing things, and I give three steps. Like the first one is like, "Here's something that's pretty easy to do." Like 
based purely on what we've done before, mm-hmm. implement it, you shouldn't have no problems. Mm-hmm. The second step is a little bit more advanced. It's like, okay, here's how you start doing things that you maybe haven't been taught yet. Mm. And then the third step is how to kind of integrate a bunch of other technologies into React. So it's like, here's what you can do once you've passed the first two steps. Now you can figure out how to glue everything together and start building a larger application. Awesome. Awesome. I like that. Yeah. What kind of what kind of projects is it that, that the student is creating? So the first project is a, just a really basic counter application. The project itself you could probably make in like 10 minutes, mm-hmm. but the whole explanation is what draws it out to be an hour long. Sure. So that's just the learning project. And then the main project of the course is still a learning project. It's not like a complete full stack application project. It's just a recipe application. So mm-hmm. a way to store recipes, edit recipes, you know, delete, add, just a very basic CRUD application. Nice, nice. Um, okay. And uh, what kind of resources do you include in that in that course? Like for like videos, quizzes, that kind of stuff. Well, that or is there is there a bit the ability for them to take the code away, or you know, is the code held somewhere for that they can access? Yeah, so I have all the videos of the course. Obviously, you can download them or stream them, whichever is easiest for you. I also have low resolution versions for anyone on like a slower internet connection or a metered internet connection. Mm-hmm. Also, all the source code is completely available. So every video has a before and after link. So it's like this is the source code at the beginning of the video, and this is the source code at the end. So if you skip a video for some reason, or maybe your code is slightly different, you can always start from where that video starts. Mm-hmm. And then I don't have any quizzes or anything because I feel like the process of the videos is like kind of quizzing yourself almost as you code along, especially at the end when I'm like, here's what you can do next. That's kind of like the quiz. Sure. Sure. Oh, it sounds really good. It sounds really good. And I like the idea that you're, you're adding your, you know, it's, it's something that a student can get and then, you know, you're adding to it, you're improving it as it goes along. That's really cool. Um, what, what kind of feedback have you had so far? It's been really great, actually. Yeah. So many people have left comments on the videos or messaged me directly, emailed me, and they've been like, oh, I've really loved this course, how it's just like smaller than a lot of other courses. Many mm. courses are maybe like 15, 20 hours long. Mm. And a lot of people are like, you know, I learned more in four hours than I learned in this 20-hour <laughs> course. And that, that feels great to me that I'm able to condense so much information into mm. a useful you know, period of time. Like people mm. actually learn from it instead of just being brain dumped too mm. much. And that one video I talked about that was like the code review video, Mm -hmm. I've gotten the most positive feedback about that. People have said that that's their favorite part of the whole course is looking back at what they've made. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Because you, you, I guess you can get to a point in, um, I mean, I do as, as I'm learning things, I'm like, you know, I will read someone's code when, and I'm perhaps I'll copy it or change it and add it in my code, but I'm not a hundred percent sure why that is there, what that means, Mm -hmm. or, you know, um, and, and having someone explain that is, is really important. Um, that how many times have, have, have I created like something and I've gone, well, I don't really know why, why that is there, but it has to happen because you copy it, something from stack over. You know what, yeah. You know code. what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like, I don't, it's like when something, um, uh, works and you're not too sure why. <laughs> yep. That's almost worse than it not working. <laughs> it is, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Or you expect it to fail and it works and it's like, yep. uh... <laughs> yeah, I've been there, done that too many times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. Going back to the course, what, um, what can, a, what does a student need to do have, or in terms of experience in order to, uh, to start this course? What's the prerequisites? Pretty much the exact same things I said for what you need to know to start learning React. Mm-hmm. Just basic HTML, CSS, intermediate JavaScript skills, and then ES6 especially, because I use a lot of ES6 features in the course. Mm-hmm. And I expect that the student knows those, so I don't mm-hmm. go in depth on how those work. So like destructuring, like we don't talk about that in the course. So I wanted it to be focused only on React. So you need to know ES6 at least to a moderate level before you start the course. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. I guess you're not here to teach ES6 in the course, you know, that's a, that, you know, you kind of need that to know that before you, you do it. So, um, yeah, as, as a, as a a course lecturer myself, it it is a bit sort of, it it can be a little bit difficult to know where the cutoff is. It's like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, because you don't, you obviously don't want to create a course, which explains everything in under the sun, because then you dilute the, the actual essence of what you're trying to teach. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really good. I'm, I'm glad that you've, uh, cornered that off. That's, uh, 
because that can be quite stressful to sort of know what to add and what not to add. I mean, yeah. in, ter- in terms of the in terms of the planning of of a course like this, how did you go about it? So the way I went about it was one doing a lot of research on like the intricacies of React because in order to teach something you need to know not of just course. how to do it but like why. Mm. So I did lots of research and then I started building projects. So I wanted to build a small project, which is where I did the counter application. Mm. I actually kind of almost pulled the idea straight from the React docs because they use a counter application at some point in their documentation. I was like, oh, that's a great idea Mm -hmm. to explain a lot of concepts. And Mm -hmm. then as for the recipe app, it's just kind of like a more fun to do application. It has the same concepts as a to do application, but it's more enjoyable than a to do and a little bit more advanced as well. So I kind of built that out and then after I built out the like projects, then I went back and said, okay, now how do I integrate all of the teaching into this? So I modified the code a lot to make sure I included all of the concepts I wanted inside that project code. Mm, mm, that sounds really good. A very thorough, thorough process. Um, you're, you're essentially sort of reviewing your own thing, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, as I was recording the course, I got through like the first five or six videos and then I realized, you know what, I'm going to change this section of the second project because I was like, I want to teach this new topic. So I even changed the course as I was recording it. So mm. it was quite a lot of review. Is it is it done in a way that one needs to sh- or should learn the first project before they jump onto the second? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think the first project is important because it lays the groundwork for the second project. Sure. Like you could jump straight to the second project, but I don't explain topics in nearly the same depth as I did in the first project. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. So in terms of web dev simplified, what, what, what is around the corner? What are your plans for the channel or just in general for uh, just business in general? You know, what's, what's the, uh, have you got any other things up your sleeve, any other courses or, or yeah. So I started a newsletter, uh, yesterday actually. So nice. that's been kind of really fun to work with. Just try to get more information out there because mm-hmm. a lot of things are too small for a video. So I figured a newsletter is a perfect place for those smaller tips. And then I also want to start live streaming in the next maybe a month or two Sweet. whenever I get some free time because I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Also more of like a thought process kind of teaching because I can really brain dump my thoughts as opposed to just here's how you do things. Yeah, yeah, I do recommend live streaming. It's um it's a different ball game. You 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 end up being, you know, you're coding really raw as in everybody can see you and there's more of them than there are of you. Yeah. So, so, so they can spot the bu- bugs that you create far quicker than you can. <laughs> so there, <laughs> yep. there is a lot of interaction, which is, which is pretty handy and pretty awesome. Um, I'm assuming in the course though, it's nice and clean. It's like, you know, the teaching the things that work rather than, uh, a video of, of you trying to fix bugs. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Almost yeah. every failure or error in the course is something that I specifically made fail to like, it's like a common failure that either I ran into making the project or a lot of people run into. So I was like, right. I'm going to make it wrong the first time to kind of teach you to why that thing you think would be right is actually wrong. Oh, nice. I like that. It's a nice little, nice little additive. That's nice. I mean, it's brilliant. I, I, I really like uh, speaking to people where they I can see them progressing in, in awesome ways. And, you know, the, the channel, your channel is doing awesomely well. Um, how on earth do you fit it all in? <laughs> that is the hard part for sure. I get up <laughs> real early in the morning. And that's the only way I can fit it all in. And just lots of time management is really the only thing I have like a very strict schedule. I make a weekly plan every week and I try to stick to it. And that's the only way I can get it all done. Discipline, self-discipline. Yep. Yep. It's uh highly rated in my book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the only thing that's keeping me going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Is there, is there anything else that you wish to add before we, before we sign off? Uh, probably the only thing I'd add is that if you're on the fence about learning React mm. or not learning it, I'd highly recommend you just go with it and learn it, or at least learn some front-end framework. It doesn't have to be React. It can be any framework. Mm. But once you learn one framework, it's going to really open you up to a lot of not only jobs, but just possibilities for your own projects. It really makes things a lot easier. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. That's such a nice little piece of advice there. It's uh, If you're on the fence, just do it. Yeah, Yeah, it it seems very daunting, but once you get into it, it's a lot easier than it looks from the outside. Like once you get that mindset, everything just falls into place. Yeah, yeah. Um, It's a bit like, I mean, I see it like, um, you know, you know, when you're, you know, when you're swimming and you're holding onto the side and you you, you say you're just learning to swim, you're scared to let go of the side, but you know that it's going to be okay. 
but because you haven't done that before, it's a bit daunting. Um, and so, exactly. you, so you end up crawling around the side. Okay, so there's a question that I ask uh, guests at the end of, of the podcast. Uh, and that is, if you could talk to your former self, what advice would you give? It can be more than one, and it can be technical or non-technical or both. So what advice so, would you give? Yeah, probably the biggest advice I would give myself is to, like, whatever you're dreaming of doing right now, start it. It's yeah. never going to be easier. Like if you say, oh, I'll start tomorrow. I'll start in an hour. No, you start right now because <laughs> I, with my YouTube channel, I kept telling myself, oh, I'll start it when I do this. I'll start it when this happens. And I pushed, pushed it off for probably like two, three years before I finally started it. Mm -hmm. And if I had just started it three years ago, like thinking about where I could be now, mm -hmm. if I had an extra three years of time as opposed to starting it when I did. Mm -hmm. So it's just like start now. Same thing with the gym. A lot of times if I like miss a day at the gym, I'm like, oh, I'll just restart my schedule next week. And it's like, no, 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 just, just go. It's like, it's okay if you messed up and missed a day. You just need to get back on the train and keep going instead of trying to find the best time to do something because there's never a best time. That's extremely inspiring and motivational. That is awesome. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. And yeah, thanks uh, for I, having me. I, I wish you well. I wish you well with the channel and the course and everything. I'll leave links in the show notes below to both your channel newsletter as well as the course, which is Start Learning React Today. Thank you very much for coming on the show. And thank you ever so much for everybody who is watching on the YouTubes and listening on the podcasts. Happy coding, everyone. And I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers. Bye. Okie dokie. Right. Hello, coders, and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today, we... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I think this happened last Me time. Me every time I do my intro. <laughs> Hello, coders, and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about...